Welcome back everybody, Patrick here. Moving on to the next question, another velocity question. So an airplane is flying north at 600 kilometers per hour. Find the resultant velocity of the plane and how far it travels in four hours if the wind has a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour in a direction of either northeast or coming from the northeast. So let's start off with part A. So we have a plane traveling north at 600 kilometers per hour. So that's like this. So this is 600 kilometers per hour. And then there's also a wind that has a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour in a direction northeast. Now what I like to do is I usually like to draw a little compass here on the head of the first vector and notice that this is north, this is east, this is west, and then down here is south. So if a wind is traveling northeast, then that means the wind is going to be going this way, right here, at a perfect angle of 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees and this is 45 degrees as well. And then this vector here has a magnitude of 100 kilometers per hour, right? So we got the plane traveling north, and then we got the wind going northeast. And then notice we can create a resultant velocity vector from here all the way to here. Right, so we have this triangle over here. It's a non-right angle triangle, but notice that we can figure out what this angle is here because from here to here, it's 90 degrees, and then this is 45, so what's this total angle gonna be? Well, that's gonna be 135 degrees. So if I take this triangle, draw it on the side so you could see it a little better, we got this, 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 this is 135 degrees, this is 100, this is 600, perhaps not the most to scale, but we're going to be solving for this side here, right? So let's call it x. That's going to be the magnitude or the speed of that resultant velocity. We're also going to have to get the direction of this velocity. So what we can do is we can solve for this theta here, which is this theta in the triangle. So to solve for this x to start, we can use the cosine law. So notice that we have an angle and uh, this angle is within two sides. So we're solving for that opposite side. So we know x squared is equal to 600 squared plus 100 squared minus 2 times 600 times 100 times cos of 1. 35 cosine law. And when you do that calculation, you end up getting 674, and that is the speed, so that is kilometers per hour. So that represents the resultant speed of the plane. They're asking for the resultant velocity, so we also need the direction. So we're going to have to solve for this theta over here. So the way we can do that, so I'm going to erase this here, we can use sine law. So we know sine of 135 over x, which we know is 674, we just solve for it, is equal to sine theta, which is what we're solving for, all over the opposite side, 100. And then when we cross multiply, isolate for that sine theta, we'll end up having uh, 100, times sine 135 all over 674. And when you do that calculation, when you get this ratio inverse sine, you end up getting theta equaling six degrees. So that means this angle here, both of these angles are six degrees. So how can we represent the velocity? Well, the velocity is equal to 674 kilometers per hour 
which is the speed, and then the direction, notice that this six degrees is to the right of north because this arrow right here, this vector is going straight up north, and then to the right of that six degrees, that's going towards the east direction. So the direction of this velocity is north, six degrees east. So that there is the answer for the velocity for part A. Now, they also ask how far does it travel in four hours? And the way you do that is you basically, we know distance is equal to what? Speed times time. So we take that resultant speed, 674 kilometers per hour, and multiply it by four hours. And when you do that calculation, you end up getting 2,696 kilometers. So that is the distance traveled for part A, 2,696 kilometers. Now moving on to part B. So everything is pretty much the same but now the wind is coming from the northeast. So it's not going northeast, it's coming from the northeast. So how is that gonna change? Well, let's just go back to this diagram for now. If the wind is coming from the northeast, well, that means that it's just going in the opposite direction of this vector. This vector is going northeast, so from the northeast means the wind will be going this way. So this vector here is going to have a magnitude of 100 kilometers per hour. This one still has a magnitude of 600. So now the resultant for part B is going to be right here. Okay, and then notice that uh, we can figure out some angles here. Notice we can use the opposite angle theory. So this angle and this angle over here in the triangle, they both have to equal, they're opposite of each other. So since this is 45 degrees, we know that this angle is gonna be 45 degrees as well. And also the exact opposite of northeast is southwest. And southwest, we know this angle is gonna be perfectly 45. It's right in the middle between south and west. So if we draw this triangle out over here, just so we could see it a little better without all the arrows and stuff. So basically what we have is we have that 600, then we have that wind coming down of 100. This is 45 degrees, and then we got this side here. So we're pretty much gonna be solving for this side and we also need the direction, so we're gonna be solving for that theta, which is right here. So this is x, this is theta. So notice again, to solve for x, we can use the cosine law. So we got x squared equals 100 squared plus 600 squared minus two times 100 times 600 times cos of that angle right there. 45 degrees. And when you do that calculation, you end up getting 534, and that x is a speed, so it is kilometers per hour. So this x here, we know it's 534, and now we just have to solve for that theta. And to solve for that theta, we can use sine law. So we can say that sine of 45 over 534 equals sine of theta over 100. And then when we cross multiply and we isolate for that sine theta, we'll have 100 times sine 45 all over 5. 34. And when you do that calculation, theta is going to be 7.6 degrees. So that means this over here is 7.6 degrees. So now notice we know what the velocity is. The velocity of the plane in part B <clears throat> is going to be 534 kilometers per hour. It's going to be the speed 
and then the direction it's basically going to be 7.6 degrees to the left of north and to the left of north we're going towards west then so basically north 7.6 degrees west right there that is your velocity and then the distance traveled in four hours at this velocity it's basically 534 kilometers per hour the speed times the time and when you do that calculation you end up getting 2136 kilometers so that's the distance traveled in part b in four hours right so again another question where you got to be careful with whether that wind direction is going towards a certain direction going towards northeast or coming from the northeast so going in the opposite way and the exact opposite of northeast is southwest hence why we had this uh, wind vector here for part b and notice that it changes the velocity depending on whether we're going towards a direction or from a direction. So just be aware of that.